Welcome, my dear students and others who might have stumbled across this video to my chapter six lecture coverage of the electronic structure of atoms continued from past lectures linked to in the description below. All right. So after this and a few more videos that follow, you should gain the following skills. That is be able to explain quantum numbers as detailed in section 6.5 of our text, which is referenced in the description beneath this video. Know the general shapes and names of the four different kinds of orbitals, SPs, Ds, and Fs. Write the longhand or condensed electron configuration of any element on the periodic table and know the differences between core electrons and valence electrons. So that's what we're going to get into. Let's begin by continuing our discussion of quantum numbers. So each electron in an atom can be described by using four different numbers called quantum numbers. These numbers, which I will now explain, are kind of like an electron's address. The first of these is called the principal quantum number, abbreviated as N. So n, the principal quantum number, describes an electron's energy level and can be any integer from one and above. That is one, two, three, four, and so forth. And exactly which of these is possible may vary depending on the orbital type and which element you're discussing. In any event, the larger this number, the further away the electron is from the atom's nucleus. Thus, n represents an electron's energy level or distance from the nucleus in the orbital in which the electron resides. For example, an electron in a 1s orbital has a principal quantum number of n equals 1. An electron in a 2s orbital has a principal quantum number of n equals 2. And an electron in a 3... Yeah, you get the idea. So that's the principal quantum number. By extension, an electron in a 3p orbital has a principal quantum number of n equals 3. And an electron in a 4d orbital has a principal quantum number of n equals 4. Now, the higher the n number, the higher the electron's energy level and further its distance is from its nucleus. That takes us to our next quantum number called the azimuthal quantum number, represented by this kind of italicized letter L. So the azimuthal quantum number, L, describes what kind of orbital, sp, d, or f, the electron occupies. Now, there are only four possible values of L. 0, 1, 2, and 3. That's it. Only four. If L equals 0, then you're talking about an s orbital. If L equals 1, then you're talking about a p orbital. If it's 2, you're talking about a d. And if it's 3, then you're talking about an f orbital. That is it, the only possible values of L. In fact, L is so simple that whenever I'm doing quantum number problems, I always start by focusing on L and then work backwards in both directions to figure out my other quantum numbers. Which takes us to the magnetic quantum number m sub l. So this quantum number, m sub l, the magnetic quantum number, can be any integer from minus l to plus l, including zero. The magnetic quantum number m sub l describes the orbital's three-dimensional orientation in space or its shape. For example, you may recall from the previous slide that the azimuthal quantum number l for p orbitals is l equals one. This means that the m sub l number for p orbitals can be negative one, zero, or positive one. So let's take this information and throw it up here at the top of the next slide. So what in the world does this mean? Well, these three m sub l numbers, negative one, zero, or positive one, represent three different kinds of p orbitals, one along the x-axis, one along the y-axis, and one along the z-axis. Make sense? All right, let's go a little bit further. Now, if you've got a d orbital, then your l azimuthal number equals 2, and your m sub l could be any of these numbers. So what does this mean? Well, these five m sub l numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, or plus 2, represent five different shapes of d orbitals. Isn't that great? Now, what about the f orbitals? Huh. Well, for f, your l number is equal to 3, so your possible m sub l's are all of the numbers right here. So what does that mean? Well, yeah, these seven numbers, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, plus one, plus two, or plus three, represent the seven different shapes of f orbitals. And we end then at the beginning. With our s orbitals, the only possible azimuthal l number you can have is zero, which means that m sub l is also equal to zero. That is plus zero, minus zero, and zero, it's just zero, that's it. This of course means that this one number, zero, represents the one and only shape of s orbital, which is spherical. So yes, the take home is s orbitals are boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's leave this train wreck then and go on to the spin quantum number m sub s. So this quantum number is the last quantum number that we typically list when we're listing our quantum numbers and is equal to plus or minus one half. That is for any two electrons in the same orbital. One is assigned a plus one half spin and the other a minus one half spin. For example, if two electrons in the same atom have the same quantum numbers n, l, and m sub l, then we would assign one electron a plus one half spin and the other a minus one half spin. Now, although this is not completely accurate, what I'm gonna say right here, you can imagine this as being as if these two electrons, both shooting around inside the same orbital around the same nucleus, 
are revolving around their individual axes in opposite rotation directions from each other, one clockwise and one counterclockwise. Now again, this isn't completely accurate, but this is one way to sort of wrap your head around it. This picture, by the way, was borrowed from a different textbook that I'll reference in the description below. I just love it so much. Now, why is this important? The reason is because of something called the Pauli exclusion principle. The Pauli exclusion principle says that no two electrons in the same orbital and atom can have the same four quantum numbers. By virtue of having a spin number, that is a fourth quantum number right there, it allows two electrons that occupy the same orbital to still have a different set of four quantum numbers because one will be a plus spin and the other will be a minus spin. Fair enough? Good. In summary then, there are four different quantum numbers which we can assign to electrons which kind of function like the electron's address. The first one is the principal quantum number which is the electron's energy level or distance from its nucleus and it can be any integer starting from one. And again, there are some rules tied to that depending on what orbital or element you're talking about. The second is the azimuthal quantum number, L, which is equal to zero for S orbitals, one for P's, two for D's, and three for F's, and that's it. The third is the m sub l, or magnetic quantum number, which can be any integer from minus l to plus l. So of course it's going to vary depending on what kind of orbital you're discussing, which includes zero. These describe the kind or shape of s, p, d, or f orbitals that you're discussing. And the last is the m sub s, or spin number, plus one half or minus one half. Got it? Good. Let's launch into some cool problems. The first set right here and the second set right here. I invite you to pause and try these on your own and then click some links in the descriptions below which will take you to some videos in which I answer some or maybe all of these. I'm not really sure. In any event, that's the end of this video right here. I hope you've had an enjoyable time. Please have a wonderful rest of your day.